All right. Hello, world. I should have uh, popped that open right when I started the stream. Uh, I did not do that. That's okay. I don't really need live coding. There, we got it up there. Uh, hey, everybody. How's everybody doing? Hope everything's going well, as always. A um, couple things tonight. Actually, I guess we should start off. So I'm, I'm not doing stream notes as much anymore where I'm trying to pick the times of when things happen. Um, oh, though, I do want to do one thing. Uh, we're going to do this real, fir real first, real fast. Uh, so I used to have on this page a return all date to date string this uh, document right I know this is not the like way that people do this anymore whoa what happened there script Did it show up oh I'm on the wrong page how about here oh there we go I just want to put a timestamp. Oh, yeah, document.write nothing. Let's actually put something in there. What do you say? Like this right here. There we go. Thursday, November 5th, 2020. Uh, okay. I'm going to add the timestamp in there. I So I go back and forth about whether or not I want to have these things timestamped. Um, but occasionally I want to be able to go back and mark things like when times of things happen so i don't show the clock because then i have to zoom out and all the fonts would get way smaller um so i figure if i put this here and just have it kind of show up whenever i'm hitting it that'll show up uh i could make it live but nah. so raw date year month date year So return format to date string. So that must be, oh, also I want to take this one out. I don't like it hot focusing to that box. So let's do this real quick. JavaScript to date string ISO. Hey, look at that. Where'd it go? Yay, MSN. So let's see what this does. Make a new tab. There we go. Ugly, but it works. Oh, it's Zeta time, though. Um, can we. Note your time zone may vary. Wait, what did I have the? Oh, I had to date string. What about just to string? What does that do? To string. How about to string? Thursday, November 5, 2020. I can do the math for military time. Uh, GMT minus five. Okay, EST. Cool. Yeah, so I just, I'll keep the timestamp up there. That way I can mark time or whatever find it um even though like for some days i'm like in the browser or i'm in pie charm or whatever so much that it, you wouldn't see it for an hour anyways but it'll be nice that it's there so that was one thing i wanted to do uh other thing i wanted to do is what oh yeah so i've got all so i use envy alt for all of my note taking. And the trick that I run into with NV Alt is it's basically just a whole bunch of text files sitting in a directory. The trick I run into is uh here. There are 2836 files in here right now. Also in this archive, there's another 3,245. 
and like right now I'm not doing anything with Ansible or with Apache, so I've moved those into the to the archive because the NV Alt only sees the files that are in here. Envy Ultra, the app that's coming out soon, hopefully, um, will let you do apparently do two different folders or have different things and all that jazz. We're not there yet. So what I want to do is set up a command so that I can load or unload different things. So like if I start doing a bunch of Apache work again, I want to be able to like click and just instead of me having to go in and grab all these nodes, I just want a little command that I can basically go anything that starts with Apache and a dash move inside. And then when I'm done with it, anything that goes with Apache dash move to the archive. Um, so that's the, the first thing I want to work on. And then after that, we'll do um, get back into the uh, video maker uh, that kind of automatically assembles all of our uh, music videos with NASA or NASA music videos, something, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so I started, I'm actually doing this in PyCharm, which is kind of weird because it's not Python stuff that I'm looking at. It's uh, straight old bash. Um, and I want to do this a couple different ways. So I want to do, I want to do this two different ways. I want to move everything that starts with a particular thing or like that has a specific kind of tag in it. Like PY dash is a, is the is effectively what I'm using for tags. I use, you know, some combination of letters with a dash immediately following it as a tag. Um, so like these are all my Python files. Uh, here's my CL, some of my CLI files. So what that lets me do is like if I just do in the search bar here, I do CLI dash. That gets all my command line stuff. Um, sometimes it gets other stuff too. Yeah. So there's PyCharm stuff down here that's somewhere in there. It has CLI dash on it because I tagged it that way. But so I want to do two things. Oh, FFmpeg CLI. Interesting. Hmm. I wasn't thinking about that. So I guess to start with, I'll just do the first tag and see how that works. Yeah, let me just see if I can get something going. Uh, Cause the first thing is just to try and figure out how to make these things happen. Um, so what I'm doing is just setting up a little directory here that I forgot where I put it. It's in here somewhere. Test while loop, YouTube calls, file move test. That sounds likely test one, input. So it should move. And I guess what I should do, so I want to start with the file name, I guess. So let me back these off. Whatever, we're going to call this um, move dash should should go oh oh don't crash move dash also go stay do not move. And so we'll have move without the dash on it. Uh, I might as well make that a text just to start with. Yeah, I guess I really should only look for tags. But I was thinking I would look at for tags inside the files as well. But like that FFmpeg thing just threw me because I'd like I'd want to keep that for FFmpeg even if I was moving my CLI stuff out of there. So I think I'm just going to look for whatever the starting tag is. 
yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna start there um so this should actually be and i'll actually make it a lot easier to do stay don't go well yeah because then you could just do that makes it way easier because i was thinking about like going into the files and reading in the files a little bit which i still i think i would have set that up so that i've got it as a capability um Yeah, because this would just be find with xargs. Yeah, so these are the different ways. that you can run stuff. But if I want to move it from directory to directory, Recursive with find, find PDF, F arms, RM. So that's for removing. I want to copy, I want to move stuff. And I may have already seen that. So this is passing. So spaces are not used as delimiters. Uh, yeah, as long as there's no. I guess slash zero would be what it is. Uh, I'm actually curious how that works. We're gonna look at that. Where's my scratch pad to look at? Move that at some point to dev. Uh, file move test. So find current directory. Oh, actually, I guess we can go into test one. Find test one name. Star dot text. No. Um, move dash star. What does that do? Okay, there's those. And so what is this? Print zero do. Okay, so slash zero. Yeah, so it's just mushing all the stuff together and not using it as a delimiter. So then if we pass that to xargs with zero, with also dash zero as the delimiter. Dash I, that, that means replace that with the file names. So you get move file names, dir. Oh, I, and then the separator. Ah, uh, I got it, 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 I got it. I got it. Man, xargs. Um, execute utility for each line, for each input line, replacing one or more occurrences of replace string in up to replacements, or five if no R flag is specified. Arguments to utility. Replacements, replacements arguments to utility with entire line of the output. Input, sorry. The resulting arguments after replacement is done will not be allowed to go behind 255 bytes. So 
So basically... Ah, uh, well, wait a minute. So you gotta get... Oh, no, 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 so you can just do to the directory. Oh, yeah, you don't have to worry about the file, like, the full file path. So there's that. Xargs, zero, that, and then we're just gonna do ls that. So we should see them. Nope. I stand corrected. Oh, I did O instead of zero. There we go. So if we're here, and we just want to move them into this directory. So just take them, move them, move that to test one output, go. So tree. That moved them. That was super simple. CLI move nv alt tag files to archive and then we'll just do uh ba -ba 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 -ba. whatever cd more grab that directory nope Archive. That'll move them. And then to reload them. Oh, uh, so really what you want to do is put a full thing on there, right? Oh, but finds recursive. Ah, I don't want to do... CLI find single, whoops. Single directory. not recursive. Max step one. Find max step one from here. into there. And then we just reserve reverse the paths to put them back. That's cool. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, that'll be fine to start with. Um, Oh, actually, so something I should do. Oops, it's in scrut. It's in here. File move test. Whoops, file move test. Uh, whatever. Good pie charm. Stay, don't move, move. Okay, let's do this. We're to keep the tag in there. Yeah, so I'll just move the primary tags out, which makes sense because it'll just chunk stuff over. Um, let's put these back in here for now. Oh, we heard it open. Uh, let's see if we can actually do that. So it was find 
test thing name. Ah. Max depth. Was it max depth? All one word? Yep. Max depth. It's hard for me to say. Name. Move dash. Oh, well, actually, let's see. If that, uh, let's see if they all move. Print zero. Xargs. So this is shoving, I can't tell if it's shoving everything over at one time and Xargs is splitting it. It certainly seems like that's the case. Or if it's sending things one at a time. I mean, it's piping, so I would expect it. I don't know how the pipe goes. That dash I with these. And we're gonna move our file into test one output. Let's see what happened. Oh, it did move it. No, nothing moved. I'm confused. Oh, I see what happened. We didn't do the input directory. Now let's try it. Tree. Okay, so it is at the start of the file automatically. So that's cool. That's what I need right there. Now I could just move stuff back and forth based off the initial tag. That will be helpful. I'll go through and figure out what I want to do. And eventually I'll actually have buttons to do it. Um, that I'll put up on them a little uh, Django site that I haven't been working on in a while, but I will at some point again. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Um, sweet. Okay. Hey, Twitter bot's up. Twitch bot's up. Whatever it's called. Uh, what am I doing? Okay, so now... I guess I put in some nuts there. This is like an 80-20 thing where that's going to be fine. And like, it's just, it would be weird to actually, I was thinking you'd look for the contents of the file. So like if I had tags inside for stuff, but again, like it's, that would move things weird. Like secondary tags are secondary. So I wouldn't want to necessarily move them out of the way. I like it. Okay, so now let's go back to close that. Our video assembler. Let's see if we can pick back up with wherever we are on it. Um, Backblaze client is out of date. Must update later. I swear, I get more pop-ups during streams than any other time. And it's not because I stream all the time, it's just they happen to show up then. And the computer's on all the time, so I don't know what's up with that. Um, okay, so... Video Assembler. I just want to walk through what this thing does again, so... Ready to call main. So I think I'm gonna use, I'm, I'm not sure how I wanna do this convention, but I feel like main and an and it shouldn't be alphabetized. Everything else can be. Uh, 
but like I feel like that would be helpful for them for them to be up there. Um, just because when you're like, hey, how does this thing work again? I want to get right into it. I don't want to have to sit there and like re like try and find it first. Like just zip to the top. Okay, here's main. Here's what it does. Load MP3 list. Okay, let's find load MP3 list. So I think I can kind of remember what these do. So collapse all. If I like control click. Ran into things. Doesn't seem to work. Oh well. So load MP3 list. So all we're doing is searching through. Well, the first thing that happens is it loads a config on a net. So we're going to load the MP3 list. We're going to get a list of all the MP3s on the directory. That's cool. Load the video URL list. Which is, so here we go. So here's our MP3 directory. There's only one thing in there because when we run this kind of as an integration test, we only want to do one. Video URL file is this file, which we've only put two in there again because we want to kind of narrow it down. And then we process MP3s. Okay, so we just we just do some load and then we process. Process MB3s. What's all that dash dash dash? Oh, interesting. So for each MP3 in the MP3 file list, we make an MP3. And again, this is me trying to split stuff out so I have a little bit better chance of testing it. Uh, make video for MP3, which is right here. And this one got really long and I'm, I'm mushing it back down. This is where all the stuff happens. Uh, and it was even longer, but I pulled a whole bunch of stuff out and moved it into this video class over here. Um, so, but this is where all the, the craziness happens. Um, and like these are kind of supporting files, pick video. Yeah. So I'm still not exactly sure on the separation of these things, but, um, whatever. So we pick a video file and we get a URL and that's this pick video down here, which looks and grabs a random URL from our list. And then we set the storage directory for it and we're, and we're creating a video object up here. And then we run get and clip on it. So we initialize it with a couple things, but we don't run anything. Um, but then we run get and clip. Again, I don't know if this is the right way to do this stuff or the skillful way to do this stuff. Get video from URL. So we go and grab the video and then print saving storage path response. Oh, this should only happen. Get video from URL. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Sorry. Getting clip. So if if the video is not already there, go get it and then clip it. And then clipping the video uh, pulls out all the individual clips on it. And so there, what you end up with is video assembler test data. This video storage dirt. Here's the original one that gets pulled down, and then all the clips. That's using uh, scene detect to pull it. And we get all, all this kind of crazy stuff. That one's going to be kind of weird. Yeah, it's going to get clipped all over the kit place. Scene Detect does a pretty good job. Actually, what is the default? So hang on. I just want to, I just realized we're passing a, this threshold. I'm going to comment that out for right now. 
just to see if it does better or worse. Like you can go through and do scene detection and like it has a way that you can run through and like print thumbnails and look at the thumbnails and adjust adjust thresholds. But I'm just gonna let it run and see what happens. Um, I don't know if it'll actually run without that in there. We'll find out in a minute. Uh, in order to do that, we need to kill this. Ah, kill them both. Yeah, I guess, yeah, and so it's, it's super weird to try and test this stuff because I'm testing over the network and testing on the file system. So it's that's one of the things I was struggling with. But so we get those. That sets up our video. So we're back in here. List clips. So we go look at the clips directory and we list all the clips. Randomly pick a clip. So get the list of clips, create a random integer between one and the total length of them, minus one since it's zero indexed and return that path. And then we figure out the duration of that path. And so here's where I want to make something happen. So to do if length is longer than 12 seconds, cut it down. Not gonna worry about that yet, but that's to do. So if it's longer than two seconds, we're gonna put the clip output on the command that we're gonna generate. This is all just printing that information. And then we drop the duration. So we're counting seconds on the MP3 and then counting it down for the length of the clip. Um, and then after we've run all of those, we generate an FFmpeg concat command that has all that stuff in there. Okay, so now, yeah. Now we're in good shape. So that, that does the run for one MP3 file. So other to do, just to kind of mark them in here. Name the output file appropriately, i.e. not video.mp4. I should probably just name it the name of the video or the name of the mp3 file, right? Make the most sense. So we're making the three for MP3 and file list. We're passing it the MP3. Processing MP3. I'm just gonna run this. So that's yeah, that's the that's the full process as it exists now. Um Again, most of the work's happening in here, which I feel like maybe some stuff could get broken out, but it's actually not awful. Yeah, because like this building this command could be passed out. Yeah, okay. Here, run it, see what happens. It explodes. Such file directory, yikes, I have to, why not? Uh, that's weird. It's right there. This worked last night and I haven't, I haven't closed it. I don't understand what's happening. Okay. 
main, line 30, line 115, line 61. That looks like it's going to be it. Line 36. Well, that used to work. What if we give it a full path? Now you happy? Now you're happy. Except it's gonna blow up. Oh, why? What happened? I don't understand why all this stuff was like something happened with the path somehow. Does it matter where I'm clicked? Now it's a whole different thing. Here, come down here. Super weird. The paths have changed on it somehow. All right. Uh oh, I said all right too soon. Oh, scene detect is probably in video. Scene detect. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Main process MP3s, clip path, random. Empty range for range. What is happening? Ugh. Did I delete too much stuff? Is that what I did? No? So there's the original. Oh, I understand what happened. It pulled down the videos, but it didn't make any clips. So when it tried to count the number of files in the clips, it busted. Eh. I'm not going to worry about that. Unless I have to worry about that. Output directory, blah, 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 to clips. Invalid value for that FFmpeg is required for script video. What is going on here? Quit. Reboot. That's our output. Get rid of that for now. URL list is cool. MP3 is cool. Config is cool. All right. Let's see what happens if we run now. Is it going to explode or is it going to work? Survey says. Now it's working. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Yeah, so, okay, so we got the video, now we're doing scene detection on it, and now we're splitting out the clips. So yeah, so what I wanna do now is just get a first run pass through this to get the full video assembled. Um, and so what I've got at this point is the basic command for the FFmpeg concat command that'll merge everything back together, given a config file that tells it what to do for the transitions. I need to create that config file because the config file depends on the number of clips that you assemble. And that's a random number because I'm putting random links of random clips together. So I've got to assemble that. Yeah, so it just, 
Oh, this is funny. It's gonna take uh, it's gonna take a while to run these. I was thinking about this last night about maybe putting it up on an EC2 instance and just letting it run and maybe giving it some course power because like the scene detection stuff takes a while. Um, but also it's gonna have way better bandwidth, even though the clips aren't actually that huge. Um, it's mainly the the processing power that that would be there. Um, EC3. Price list. I was actually talking with some of the Amazon guys. Whoops, that didn't work so good, did it? Is this the same page? No, close. Um, with their pricing calculator. Unlimited mode pricing. I don't know what that is. T4G instances in unlimited mode. CPU credits are charged at four cents per blah blah blah. Okay, whatever. But you could get and so uh, this is the other trick for me is like I don't really know what all these things mean. Compute optimized, current generation. Also, they should put, I think guess this is RAM up here, right? It's this first one. Oh, vCPU. So I could pay a couple bucks for 64 core machine for an hour and fire this at it and see how quick it goes. That'd be funny. Oh, you could actually split out. So if you really wanted to do it, you could split out the downloading to like a S3 bucket independently and then do all the cutout later. It's actually not a horrible idea. Um, so here is the command to run. Okay, so this is all working. We're in good shape right here. So if we if we actually ran this command right now and gave it a um, this concat config JSON on. Right here. And we put the right number of things in it, which why don't we do it? One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve. So we want eleven. Two, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We need one more. Do it with a comma. So we take this command. Maybe. Come here. Come here. Let's go to our terminal. See if we can do it from here. That has the thing there, right? Yeah, so we paste this. And hit go. This should do all of our assembly for us, which will take it a minute. Yeah, so I need to I need to automatically generate this file, and then there's also different transitions you can do. So like I could I could just give it one transition type and have it do that thing all the same time, um, but I want to have the transitions in between different scenes be different transitions because that's possible, right? So. Oh, and you could do different links too. Yeah, so like you can do like I'm just throwing all kinds of randomness at this, right? I think I got rid of that file, right? Okay, yeah, so it's building it right now. Thing I learned about MP4 is if you don't finish the file, it's worthless. Like you have to have like a piece of data at the end of it that lets the whole thing work, which is crazy to me. It seems like you know if you if you wrote a one terabyte file but you missed the last however many bytes that one terabyte file is useless. It's just crazy. Though, I mean, there has to be software out there that people can kind of reassemble stuff, right? I would totally expect. All right, almost there. 
EC2 pricing. Oh, that's for metal. Eh, that's going all the way down there. Yeah, 64, 96. It's crazy. Yeah, I may actually do that a little bit. Just run the, just build the thing and put it up on an EC2 instance and fire it away and see how quick it goes for an hour for two bucks. See how many it can make. Because, like, it doesn't, it's no big deal for me to just sit here and leave this thing overnight. Um, and I could actually, I've got a little faster machine I could put it on. It's my stream machine. But it'd be fun to do that for EC2. So there's the file. <coughs> oh, we've got to overlay the assembly, or the audio on it too. That's the other thing. Once you get a cut, I think that was a cut. See, some of these are too long. Oh, and it went back to that one. Like, it's only got so many videos to pull from, so it's it's going to repeat the clip sometimes. <laughs> this is going to be funny. Um... Okay, so what do we need to make progress on? Let's do... So the easiest thing to do... So process, that was process mp3, right? So that... Here, hang on a second. So we run this, it should go really quick. Because it's already got the videos and the clips. There you go, yeah. So it's processing test one MP3. So we're just gonna do And this is where I'm trying to figure out where to put stuff. Um So actually, let's do here. Let's actually test this through. This will make sense. Test video assembler. Yeah, see, I just didn't have very many tests in here at all. Um, Test, what do we want to do? Um, output file name. Actual equals that. So if assert equal expected actual. I'll just run those. That should just pass. There you go. Oh, you know what I didn't do yet? Is make this bigger. We're going to go to 19 tonight. Oh, it's so not cool. Yeah, I almost want to get a smaller... If I made a smaller window, I made the font smaller. I would still be working on the same size area though, so I guess, yeah, whatever. Um, so how, what's the way, right way to do this? Again, a lot of this is me stretching my testing muscles and exercising my testing muscles.
Well, what you could just do is... See, I'm looking for the separation of concerns stuff. So make video for MP3. Hmm. But see, it feels like I'm having to call that kind of funny. What if we did this? Well, see, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. I mean, I can do this a couple different ways, right? OK, let me just try one way and see what happens. I'm kind of stuck, so I'm just going to see if I can test my way out of it. Um, so that's working. What is the thing that we want to see? I need this file path to change. So what I really need is an output file path. Video output file path. So this will still work, and then this will break, because that doesn't exist. Oh, and also, before we do that, hang on. Let's get back to green. Come here. OK, OK. And really what we're looking for is what? Well, who cares right now? Um, some path test one, no, test name.mp3, uh, mp4, right? So just make sure that works. That works. Now it's going to break because this doesn't exist. OK. Back in testing mode. What do we call it? Get video output. Def, get video output path. Sev. Video output file path equals that. Return video output file path. So it's still going to break because we're not lined up right now. But we can get back to green by putting this here. All right, so that's our stuff. Now, how do we all want to actually populate it? Because we want to pull. See, I think we want to pull off of what else do we have here? Clip duration, video output, load MP3, load URL list, make videos, make dir for file path, pick a video, process. We don't have any file path stuff in here, do we? Um, oh, well, so we can start with the video output route. So this is gonna bust because that's not lined up right now. But that's fine, because we can fix that right here. Test name.mp4. So that should work. It works. Cool. And then now we need to pass the file name to it. 
And so I don't want to necessarily pass it in and have it pass back out. Or so, and this is where I keep struggling is, is should you actually pass stuff back and forth or should you set an instance variable and have it travel that way? Um, and I kind of like the instance variable idea. But now I'm into another another thing about how would I want to test that. Because really what I want to start doing is using getters and setters. Um, but I don't know. Should you test getters and setters? I think you definitely want to do getters. Yeah, okay, this makes, I like this, this is cool. So if we're just doing a getting and setting, then it's fine. Um, but we can have the methods there in case we need to do something crazy with them. Uh, yeah, so this is, how do you do like a work in progress? Does that work? That did not work. Hmm. Unit test. Ah, this looks like something that we're looking for. Actually. Nope, don't have anything yet. One ignored. Ah, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That's what I'm looking for. I need to come back to this. I like that a lot. Okay, cool. So let's just set, I'm not going to test the setter. E set So 
itself. MP3, current MP3 path. And we want to make this happen up top. We test, does everything still work? Yeah, so this one's ignored. Let's run the full suite. Not that there's much to it. So that's got our file path, I think. See, that's weird, where it's like, it almost feels like I should be testing it. Whoops. Oh, it needs to run the full thing. Hmm, but it didn't print it. Oh, we're not calling it. Okay, that's calling it. So now I want to hoist this out. Uh, not yet. Yeah, and so my new thing that I'm thinking of is actually, and I don't know if it's the right way to do it, but it's actually setting up getters and setters for everything, and so not accessing things directly. I don't know if I like that or not, but I'm going to experiment with it. We're just going to see how it goes. I do like it, though, because you can kind of lay in filters over it if necessary, right? Especially for the setters. Uh, getters. So we're going to get current MP3 path. Actually, we're going to change that name. Set. current mp3 file path. I'm not gonna refactor this stuff yet. I could sit there and make these file paths or do whatever. Like that's that naming is not good. Um, it's fine though for now. Um, so I'm setting that. Nope, I'm not. What did I do? Uh oh. I'm in trouble. What's up? Seriously. You know, just trying to fight with some tests. Good old, good old fighting with tests. Still trying to get my head around testing, really, and figuring stuff out. So it's, uh, I'm going back and forth with getters and setters right now, figuring out if I want to, like, do those more than actually directly hitting the instance variables. Uh, Still curious about that, and I just broke something. I have no idea what I did. Um, current file MP3 MP3. Um, somewhere it looks like line 125. Oh, set current file path. How about that? See if that works. See getters and setters already messing with me. Tell it 
Hell don't ask. Oh, that sounds familiar. Rather than asking an object for data and acting on the data, we should instead tell an object what to do. This is encourages us to move behavior into an object to go with the data. Ask, tell. Avoid using getters and setters, setters especially. Uh, insul insul oh, they break in capitulation. Okay. So basically just hit directly on the instance variables. That's what I've usually been doing, but I was like, I'm doing experimentation with this stuff and that was uh, that was where I was headed. Do you need to monitor certain values, signaling alarm? You really this in an ask style. We might have data structure representing things. All right. Ask monitor, yeah. Total ask for says instead put the behavior inside the monitor object itself using the same fields. Class tell monitor. By R except Lauren a little more entropies like this. Tell monitor. Hmm. I need to reread this a few different times. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think I'm with you. Yeah, and so like this is weird too, because like this is all internal processing stuff. So like I'm just building. Like I had a stack of procedural code basically. Um and I'm just trying to figure out how to like separate things a little bit, partially to make them more testable. Um just so it's not a huge stack of of procedural code, right? Um and I like all this code in this video class I split out last night, which was super helpful because I could actually like start testing things and figuring out how things worked. Um, and so I'm still kind of struggling with that, like how to pass around, like, for example, like how do I want to get to the point of updating this, uh, file name based off another file name that's somewhere else in the, in the thing. Um, and so I was going to set it and then reget it, but yeah, I think maybe I'll just do a straight instance variable. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I, that makes sense. It hasn't totally sunk in, obviously, yet. <laughs> That'll take some doing. But so, would you, yeah, so I guess I would just go. So you still have to put data in, right? So would you assign data directly into instance variables or would you use getter or would you use setters there to basically say like, hey, I need to populate you with some data. Because I've got like, so like here's the config stuff that you send in. Ask, don't tell. No, tell, don't ask. Sorry, I got it backwards again already. Um, so you can get rid of all query methods with their time. Yeah, so. Hmm. So part of this too is I'm not, I'm probably not in as nearly as many objects as I should be with this.
And it's funny because this is one of the things that it's actually a relatively simple thing that I'm doing. I'm just, I want to flex, I want to build the muscle for when this is harder stuff um, or more complicated stuff. I mean, now you got me thinking about the right way to do this um, or that way to do this. All right, so let's burn this. We'll get rid of the setter. Everything still runs. Yeah. Yeah, so like I've got. So I'll walk you through the top level of what's happening here. So I'm processing a bunch of MP3s. And then when I process them, really all this does is it kicks off a loop that looks through them and fires the make video. Because I wanted the separation there between the loop of all of them and then the being able to test one at a time. And I'm passing, oh, I guess I'm passing the file to that. So here's where I am getting hung up about whether or not I should do it this way, is I have access to the path, including the file name in this MP3 variable. Here, I wanna use, instead of having it, you know, file name.mp3, I want it to be file name.mp4. I could really easily put a regex up in here to do that, but it feels like that just keeps adding more and more procedural code into this mix. And so that's where I was trying to figure out how to do a breakout and I could just make another method, but then I'm putting kind of methods inside of methods, but that's this make one might just be a bunch of methods. That's where I'm kind of like just writing the code would actually be no big deal. Like I could finish that pretty quickly, but I'm trying to figure out like a, you know, more OOP way to do this. Um, Yeah, and I do, so I'm doing that a little bit like with this video when I make it, like I, I give it, like it needs to have a URL and a storage directory. Those are the two things it has to have. And then from that, it does everything else that it needs to do. So I'm using that a little bit. And then in, whoops. And then I do, in the init, I set a couple things just as placeholders uh, and then load in the config stuff. Uh, doing that explicitly. So like if I if I load the config file and I miss something, it explodes, which is what I want to have happen. I don't want it to try and keep going without knowing what it's doing. Um, but so I guess one question, would you put in, so like in this make, so if I need to pull this MP3 thing right here, so this processing MP3 actually shows up right here. And so I can just throw a regex in there and grab grab this but it feels like that needs to be another method, right? So like the way that I would think to do that is like down here, uh, and this, and this, so this is where I want to test it because I want to make sure that I'm getting the right thing. Uh, but this is again, getting into your get, right? Or it's the, it's the assembly of the thing. How do you tell it to do that? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, like I totally believe it needs to be smaller objects. Um, I I don't have enough experience yet to know where to like find those seams. Um, but would you so? Yeah. Uh... Yeah. So I guess. Hmm trying to think how or where I would split some of this stuff. Cause like, and I started moving some, some more of this stuff over into the video, which is kind of the, like, that's kind of the thing. Oh, I guess you could do that here actually. So if you passed in the URL, the storage directory 
in the mp3 file you could then basically say and I want to use the word get but it's like you tell it to give me the final path that's probably where the split needs to jump Yeah, well, and that's that's kind of moving everything over into it, but that helps me get my head around it a little bit easier. Um, test video. Yeah, so. Ooh, all these tests are going to break when I do that. Uh, unless I give it a default. Um, yeah, so what if we back way off of this? And so in the video, we're actually just going to say, give me um, This is actually helpful because it's starting at the end. Yeah, so what got me a little hung there was I was I was dealing with two lists of things or lists of things, a bunch of MP3 files and then a bunch of URLs. And then those URLs produced a bunch of clips. And a bunch of that stuff I was getting hung up in. But really what I need is an FFmpeg concat command. Um, Make sure that it doesn't explode. Okay. And so that command. And here's a little bit where I get hung up too is. Uh, so this is basically an integration test, but that's kind of okay, right? Is where you're headed with this in terms of. Uh, get video example URL, for example. Okay, hang on a second. Uh, so get video from URL. Get video from URL. So yeah, saving a URL to a storage path. So it uses the response, it uses the requests module to grab the URL. If you get a 200 status code, you check the directory of the storage path, make sure it exists. If it doesn't exist, you create it. Then you save the data to a temp file because I don't want to have partial files. When the temp file is completely written, then I move it over into the final output um, here. So that's the get video from URL stuff. Which is, you know, that's, there's nothing really for me to test on that one because it's everything that that is doing is just using, like it's using the request objects, it's checking a request thing, it's using the path there, it's making a dir, it's writing a file and it's renaming a file. So there's not like a whole test behind that. It's just get a video, put it on the system, but do it in a way that's safe is what that amounts to. Um, Again, yeah, here, here's where I was trying to mess, or here's where I was messing with setters, basically. Or, sorry, getters. Um, but here's one, like, storage path, right? I need to split out based off the URL. Like, this one actually does something. Um, but, yeah, so I got, yeah, so, and this, this, I was back and forth on this about whether or not to use the getters or setters, and, like, I was experimenting, basically. Get you get get video from URL. Yeah, I, that was the best I could come up with. Um, 
But yeah, like these, I, and I wasn't super happy with these, but again, I was trying it to see the experiment of it um, and get some get some exposure. Using. Same thing with URL, right? I'm just calling the URL. Uh, but like the URL hash, that kind of actually does something. So like, I do want that to be a thing. Um, I actually don't even know if I tested. Yeah, see, I'm testing URL directly. That's kind of, that's super redundant. Um, but so what, yeah, so we, we get it and then we clip it and the clipping just makes all the individual clips. And we need, so that's the video. And the MP3 is still over here. So I, ha I need to combine the MP3 and the video and it, do it almost doesn't feel right. Well, I guess it could be. So you could just send a target duration. Ah, okay, here's a tell. Um, But this is this is where it gets tough to test because I'm doing all this random shit in there. And that's another thing that's really got me spun around is because like I'm sp I'm getting a random video. I'm splitting it into scenes and I'm picking a random one of those scenes that has a random duration and then rinsing and repeating. So like trying to come up with the final command of the thing that I need to have, like the target is tough, but I could tell it. I could tell it to give me a video command. I just don't have a good way to test it. Like I, I keep, that's where I keep bouncing. And like, again, I'm trying to exercise on tests. Like I could just write this and it would be fine, but I want to, I, I want to wrestle with the with the aspect of finding the test. Uh, you lost me on load from network. But what we could do is, so if I just so if I if I give it the video that gets that, and then I can actually just say give me. Give me a clip. Make a video that's in number of seconds long. So you would pass a duration to it. And have it do the assembly there. I'm trying to figure out if that feels. Yeah, that would probably work. I'm still not following you on the load load from network. And in terms of like just calling video and saying load. That's another one. Whoops. Just stop. Here, let me just try this. Well, actually, I guess what I could do. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. What am I passing? So I'm passing a URL and a storage dir. So it's kind of the idea that you just, you send the primary pieces of data to it that it needs to have on a net. I think that's what you're saying. Yeah, that backlay stuff just started today. Oh, 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 you're talking about naming the method. I gotcha. I'm not going to mess with that at the moment because my head's like, I know what that's called at the moment. <laughs> and if I rename it, I'm never, I'm not going to find it again for three days. 
But so if we just, oh yeah, so if we tell it. URL, there's our storage dir, and if we actually pass it, okay, this, this may get us there. But again, like we gotta, I gotta figure out how to do the test with the, it's all that random stuff and all the, the load files that get me, or the clip files that get me. Um, Oh, but I could, I could, I could abstract that away. I could abstract that away. All right, hang on. I think I got a hook into this. Clip tests. All right, yeah, yeah, so let me let me back into this real quick. I think I got a hook on something here. So Key for all that stuff that would have saved me about 20 seconds there, but I didn't use it. All right, so there's that. So what I'm looking for, well, yeah, so what I want to have happen is it to produce a video, but really what I want to have happen is it produce an FFmpeg command and a uh, config file. But if I do this, here, output equals so if I start with this because what I, what I want to have yeah this is what I want to have this thing output so I need it to produce the command and I can have it run the command I actually don't have to have it test the running of the command like that's just gonna be sub process running, but I need I need to target this, but I need to abstract away the randomness, but I can do that by sending, by having the creation of the thing exist independently of the randomness. So I can pass it a list and say, here's the number of seconds or the clips or the whatever to use for the assembly. And I can split that out from the, from the actual generation of the thing. So the the creation of that list and the usage of that list, I can I can separate the concerns. I th think I got my handle around this all of a sudden. Oh yeah, yeah. how go, man? We'll see you around. Take it easy. I'll let you know how this goes, or I may still be here when you get back. All right, so that's what we're working on. And we're going to call this, we're going to make this one V3. V3, V3, V3. All right, so there's V3. And also with V3. Uh, okay, do we need to pass? You know what we're gonna do? 
And we're going to take a running start at this. And go all the way back to the beginning. Uh, scratch pad. Rename this. We're going to burn all these for a little bit and roll back with this other idea of how to approach it. Clean slate. Tests. Video assembler, V3, pi. Let me close all these for now. Test main, go. Everybody working? No test found, cool. One test found, one test found, okay. So, that's gonna explode. We need the file. Add. Uh, I guess we don't need that. Need that def init. Okay, found it. Everybody's still happy? Yeah. So, all right, figuring out what we need to actually have is an ffmpeg command, ffmpeg concat command to start with. I'm going to rebuild the whole thing. Ah, see. Maybe not. Okay.
FFmpeg. Let's find one of the actual commands here. So this is what we're looking for. Start with that and not mess with it too much. So that's going to blow up. Up for a different reason now. But if we put this in, passes. Maybe static. So I don't know what that means. All right, so how do we want to do pathing? So we're going to pass up the URL. mp3 path or do we just want to pass it the duration now let's do the full see if we can do the full assembly so mp3 path Ah, watching the news. Oh, that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. Never a good idea. I'm starting. I'm I'm doing a clean slate thing here just to see. I want to try and take the the more tell angle at it. Um, and also take a like rejigger my brain at it a little bit. Um. So if we've got so and I'm I'm doing like effectively an integration test at the end. I'm going to try and roll back into it. Um, so this is what I'm trying to produce. Um, but what I really need is full paths here. So this is going to blow up again because that's not the same. But we're gonna make those the same. Oops, helps you run the right thing. And so now what we want to have here is clip root dir. I 
It's going to be this. Whoops, don't do that. Still passing, still passing. Wow. That's not a lot of votes. I legit wonder how many buildings are going to get set on fire regardless of who wins. Because the number is not zero. Whoops. Ah, come here. freaking out yeah it's it's a super wild ride right and like election was what two days ago but like i'm actually i'm cool with it like count the votes like that's a good idea because we'd like people to vote and that's the whole point but yeah crazy Okay, now how, okay, so here's here's where it goes funky. So let me, I'm just gonna do, I wanna get full paths here just so I can like start getting some stuff to show up. Yeah, I'm with you, fair election. Like, which we can talk about the fairness of the election and like the electoral college and all that other jazz as well. That's a whole different conversation. But yeah, like legit votes, let's count them. Let's figure out what's going on. Um, and then go from there. <laughs> I legit haven't been watching it. Um, so if if they call a winner and you're on and I'm here, let me know in chat and I'll go look and then I don't know what I'll do at that point. <laughs> uh, I, I'm actually not I'm actually not at all disappointed to be streaming a little bit right now and not paying attention to it having it like a thing that's just in the background not even in the background just out there you don't think it's tonight okay yeah I, uh, I was actually I was wondering if somebody's done the math of like whatever 100 yeah so who knows but if there's 100,000 votes which that's a hundred thousand. Damn it. And it takes 20 seconds to do it. So we got 2 million seconds. Uh, divided by, let's just call it 10 hours a day with 60 minutes in an hour. Am I doing this right? No, something's wrong. That can't be right. Something's wrong there. Whatever. I was trying to figure out what the math was of like how long, like how many how many votes get processed per hour is the question. And then how many total votes are left and then watch the, the thing narrow down. Um, but I'm sure there's like different things for like how long it takes to do votes, depending on like if they have to go like look at it more and all this other stuff. But I'm like, I haven't the, the few times I've dipped into stuff, I haven't seen anybody basically say, Here's the math behind where we think the actual outcome is going to be. I don't know if it's possible to do, but it seems like, you know, computery part of my brain is like, shouldn't we see it? Whoa, interesting. 
so that's why they're after it to stop the to stop the try and do everything they can to actually stop the voting or stop the counting is because he's had the majority of it yeah so you can just watch the trend like if if this trend holds and this trend has been pretty steady then given the number okay interesting Like, I just, uh, part of me is also just like, okay, let's just, let's solve it. Let's figure it out. Uh, I'm not, I'm not a super political person, but like, I would like for things to, they're not going to calm down for a while, regardless. But like, let's at least start the process of making it get started. I don't know. Craziness. Um, all right, so let's just do this. JSON path. And put that there. And put this here. <laughs> there you go. I can actually get behind you on that. Um, it's just, it's such a weird, like the whole thing has just been so weird. Yeah, no, it's I, I'm with you. Like, it's it's a startup time, um, so like, don't no no apologies necessary. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely I'm I'm definitely ready to see whatever happens happens. <laughs> and the whole thing is just so surreal. I mean, it's so surreal. But uh, like, there there will be. Like I'm really the the thing that I'm most interested in is how this looks in history books 15, 20 and 30 years from now. Um like what they what they teach about it and like where the where the trend lines go for all of the stuff. Just like it's who knows? Like it's so so out there. Um, but yeah, hopefully like, and like maybe tomorrow, maybe we'll know if it goes into the weekend, people are going to lose their shit. Uh, so this is going to work and then we can pull this in here. That should still work. Okay, yeah. So this is helping. And then output file. Yeah, okay, so JSON config path. Well, really, hmm. No, that's all cool. I like this. This is fine. MP3 path equals some path, some path to MP or song.mp3. Yeah, so I, th I, what I need to do is figure out how to like set instance variables, which I know how to do it. It's just, I, that's where I was kind of lacking is like firing stuff into instance variables so that I can just call methods and I can ab abstract away all the randomness and all the file system stuff and the network stuff. Um, so we're going to do this song name dot MP three. So this should still pass, but what we want to do is make this song name dot MP four and that's going to fail. That's okay, because we're going to hard code this for a minute. 
Actually, what we're going to do is put it in here hard-coded so that we can see to get it. I read very slow. Bear with me. Yeah, I can't disagree with any of that. Yeah, no, I, I can't disagree with any of that. Oh, I've never really even heard people saying that, to tell you the truth. I Again, I'm so far out it, like I I just don't get in it for the most part, so I hadn't heard that was a that was a thing. Um I would never have expected that. He doesn't fit my model of a libertarian at all. But who knows? Um I like all those terms are so all over the place. Um uh, Oh actually hang on we can do this right now, right? Okay, I think my head's back in testing. Or I think I've got a thing on this. Test. Video file name. Ah, oh, I need to do it again. Video file name. So given song mp3, it's really going to be song mp4. So that's going to pass. And then we're going to do this. <laughs> 0 0.036. It's going to come down to like seven votes. Oh, wow. And so I'm assuming the trend line has been... So is this all mail-in ballot opening stuff too? I may have to actually put something up on the other screen over here. Yeah, and so is it is it the same thing that you're talking about in Pennsylvania where there's a still a bunch of mail in, but the like the majority is going Biden's way? What am I doing? That's okay. I just want to make sure it hits. Should be hitting, but incorrect, right? Yeah, so if we do this, name, mp4, go. Yeah, so where I'm headed now is to try and abstract all the, is like I'm trying to take all the other stuff, like all the mechanics of it, away. So like the actual downloading the file splitting the file, counting, getting the clip numbers and like all the other stuff. I want, I'm going to try and not do any of that and only do the assembly of the final command and then 
backfill all that other stuff, um, which is making more sense in my head now. Uh, all right, so we're hard coding that. So really what we need to do is we need to get the base name Yeah, okay. Yeah, betting odds, like, they are pretty good with what they're talking about most of the time. So um, I would not, as they say, I would not bet against them. Uh, base name, pi. So we're just going to use this. Ah, come on, anyone does that. Import OS. My link's not working. Wow. And there's still 200,000 to go. So how many how many votes were counted total if he lost 90,000? How many total votes were counted in there versus how many are left? I guess is the question, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, wouldn't you hate to see it? Um. Yeah, I I can't imagine it. Like, oh my god, just because I feel well, I feel like no matter who wins there's going to be just malevolence across the board. Um, and like, that's going to go who, whoever gets got basically. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I, I don't know, man. Uh, I, th I think it's going to be, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, but those numbers, like, it's super interesting seeing that. Oh, where'd it go? Come here. He ran away. Yeah, so 90,000 votes in six hours. How many more hours are left to go? Because 90,000 by six hours is... 11,000, 12,000 an hour. So in two more, if that trend continues in two or three more hours, it would flip. Uh, by three or 4 a.m. Eastern time. Okay, cool. Which one of them is the child muster, or both of them? <laughs> I, I think I heard something about Biden, right? But, um, and, like, who the hell knows with that stuff? No, oh, Trump. Okay, gotcha. I've, I've heard, I've heard it leveled against both of them. So, but again, I don't, I have no way of knowing. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and see, that's, I don't, 
stuff that's that kind of specific and targeted, I'm like, I don't touch one way or the other. It's just like, ah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have an opinion about that or not. Like, I don't, that's, that's a fact that either is or isn't. My thing about it is like, ah, I don't know. I'm not, I can't tell you if we prove that he is or prove that one or the other of them is, then that's a whole different ball game. But like, I don't know, just weird. Um, Yep. Yeah, exactly. I, I do not want to be president. I did for a little while. Not anymore. Not my thing. Uh, why are you angry? Oh, because it's been returned twice. Is that going to pass? No. Oh, because I pulled the extension off of it. Uh, we didn't want to do that. We just want to do this. Still failing. Oh, we got to split it. We got to turn it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I have empathy. I would be concerned about every decision I make affecting somebody negatively somehow because you can't make big decisions without affecting somebody negatively somehow. And that would be tough. Though, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I would, if given the opportunity, I would 100% do it and I would 100% try and do my best at it and try and shift things away from the giant split of di of disparity that we have right now that in the way that people live um as well i'll never be elected president also not a politician also don't think i've got an enemy to be a politician other than those reasons i would totally do it yeah yeah and that's and, and it's crazy because like the, the the system is well, it's weird because it feels like the system is also designed to move kind of slow. And like, I've, I've got a buddy who is on here sometimes who knows tremendous amounts of all about all this stuff. Um, but I should check with him a little bit and see kind of what the thought of that is, because he's he's got well reasoned and well researched opinions about all this stuff. Um, it's always super interesting talking to him. Yeah, it's funny the for the empathy stuff. Like, I, the other one I can think of too is like Jimmy Carter, because I think like everybody now kind of looks back at him, and goes, "Oh, he was like doing a good thing, a good guy." But like at the time, it was just like he got bowled over, right? Yeah, I don't blame him. Like for moving the slowing stuff down. That's a I'm a big fan of that. Like sometimes it's a pain in the ass, but it's the if it zips around too much, I think that would be worse, right? All right, import RE. RE sub, we're gonna switch out slash dot, huh, MP3. I forget how to do this. Is that how you do it? Hey, that is how you do it. Okay, his number says identifiers. <laughs> wah, wah. Come on. I was, oh man, we were messing with, uh, we do some Amazon stuff at work and we were setting up um, uh, RDS, Relational Database Services, Postgres databases. And like, there's two fields 
one is like for the name of the cluster and the other one's for the name of the database. And the name of the cluster, you can only use dashes. You can't use underscores. The name of the database, you can only use underscores. You can't use dashes. And it's just like, what are we doing, folks? Come on. it's They're both legal characters. And like, I get it, like for their reasons, right? Or whatever. But it's still just like, I was trying to copy and paste because I like things to be named the same and like copied one and pasted it. And it gave me an, a, you know, an angry message at the second one. So I fixed it and then copied it and pasted it back and it yelled at me up there. And it's just like, oh, come on. Uh oh, I actually don't know what an aggr oh, aggregate lookup. Okay. Uh, are you using numbers as identifiers? Because I, I would advise against that. Are you streaming? Or are you just doing your thing? Oh, left join in Mongo. Okay. Nope, not streaming. Okay, no worries. I'd give you a view. I can't. By the way, I, I think you were doing the thing where you could kind of hear me while you were programming and doing your stream stuff. I can't do that. My brain just does not agree. It goes boop. Uh, All right, so there's the path. So now if we just do video file name here. That's still gonna work. If we call the right file. Nope. It exploded. Why'd that freak out? Oh lord. That is not a helpful thing to see. FFmpeg. Somewhere in here. No, oh, mp4.mp4. I see it. Don't do that. Try again. There we go. Oh, nice. I did the first three chapters of one of the iOS books when it first came out, when they first went to Objective C and liked it. It was fine or whatever. Like, it's, it was a ugly language. Um, but like, I just didn't have time to do it, um, to even sniff at it. So, uh, but it looks uh, like, it looks super interesting. Um, why is that angry? Invalid escape sequence slash dot. You can't do a slash dot. Was it? Why can't you do a slash dot? I mean, your dot would still work there, but whatever. Okay. MP4, MP4, MP4. It's a very long video file. Yeah, the uh, it's my new encoding technique. You think MP4 is compressed? You should see MP4, MP4, MP4. It's uh, super tight. I've never looked at Swift. I did. When they had that iPad app, which I think was Swift Playgrounds, wasn't that it? That showed you just a little bit of the syntax stuff that was like the little cartoony graphics or whatever. Uh, I did a little bit of that because I was going to show it to my niece um, to see if it made sense. But it was like, it was interesting, but it wasn't quite there. Um, or she, I don't think she would have like hooked into it because I've shown her some other stuff before that was similar to that. And she's like, eh, whatever. Oh, yeah, Playgrounds, yeah. It's nice for showing the syntax stuff. Um, and it's funny because it's one of those things where it's like, I can see some people being like, oh, it's a goofy little app or whatever. It's like, well, it's showing you how to code. <laughs> Who cares what the graphics look like? Yeah, yeah, all the Cocoa framework, yeah. And I never, yeah, so I never touched the frameworks. I never got down that far. Um, I was always just at the higher level, just like trying to figure out like how to do hello world, basically. Why is that green? Yeah, whatever.
whatever. It's fine. Okay, and so now the trick is going to be how do we want to do So again, I'm going to just kind of pack this a lot. Uh, clip. File path list. All right, so there's that, and we're gonna do whatever. Path one, one dot mp4. I just want three of them. Path two, two, eh. I'm not gonna make this more complicated than it has to be. So let's just put that in there to start with. Make sure we're still passing, we're still passing. What do we call it? Clip file path list. Clip file path list. So that is gonna be here. And we're just gonna return this to start with. See if that goes green. It does. Cool. Now I can work on it. Oh, Coco is? Interesting. <laughs> A bunch of badly written Java. It's the name of my new band. Badly written Java. Yeah, and that's that's something that I like. I really like the so I've only known a little bit about the stuff about OOP, just did like one little course and a couple things here and there, and like I still need to go read the like the Gang of Four stuff and all that. But like just the concepts of like the loosely coupled objects, like really like that's appealing to my brain of like here's a thing and here's a thing, and then they can talk, but like they're not like mushed into each other like that really when i first kind of clicked in there a little bit i was like "Ooh, i think i'm gonna like that now i just gotta figure out how to do it yeah i really should spend less time doing this stuff and more just like reading i was gonna start doing like a chapter a day reading thing but it's just been a little bit crazy recently um so that has not happened hopefully we'll soon uh so we're gonna do actually let's do clipter yeah, because they're all going to be in the same thing, so that's fine. Clipter, one, two, three. Oh, might as well do four since we got four down there. So that's going to blow up because we just added one. Also, we changed it. Forgot about that. Also, we biffed it there. Let's see if this works. Passing. Okay. So that's our list. Now what we need to do is pass in clip IDs. And actually I wanna do one B three D. Here, let's change these one at a time. One B three D. So we're passing, we're passing. Now we're gonna fix this over here. One B, I just want something that, so it's not straight number stuff. 3D. That's gonna fail because we need to fix that here. One B, three D. Passing. So now what I should be able to do 
is join that. Yeah, see all this stuff I've heard before, but is not, not there. I don't know what's going on with the de destruct sequence. I'm kind of freaked out. We're going to blow something up. Is that something is happening in the world? Did are you still there? I hope you're still alive. <laughs> I am a poor Trekkie. I, I did not remember that. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Um, which enterprise was that? I don't remember. I'm guessing Kirk. And I forgive me if I don't remember if that was enterprise C, D, E, or F, or whichever one. That's not... I'm not a good geek that way. I, I enjoyed them tremendously, but didn't... That stuff doesn't stick. Kirk's? Okay. Yeah, cool. That sound Like, that... That sounds like... some In my head, that sounds like something that would have happened in that... Um, in that version of the universe. Okay. A and B. For some reason, I thought... It started with either B or C, but I didn't think A was in the mix. Um, but I don't remember why that is. It's just something that sticks out in my head. Uh, okay, so let's try. So, yeah, so we're going to try and do this. So I want to stay green. So I'm trying to assemble this up here and just see if we can make it work. Uh, join that. Also, join that. Oops. Ah, uh, bummer. Contemporary line, unaligned, hanging in dent. How about that? Uh, so there's our JSON path, our file name, and then hopefully all of these will just join right up. Does that compile? It compiles. So now what happens if we try and return here? Ooh, it worked. Yeah, okay, so we can just make that list. Which really... I'm gonna leave it there for now. Because there could be some assembly that happens there. Oh yeah, yeah, there would be assembly that happens there. Um... Specifically, this assembly. I think. Shouldn't have done all this at the same time. Should have done one. Hey, it worked. Okay, so that's the path list.
This is where I get stuck. So, oh, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, self. Clip file. Paths. Uh, possible clip file paths. Possible clip files. So, to do is load this from the file system. Oh, I didn't know the NX01 was a thing. Oh, Archer. Yeah, yeah, that was... So, I, I watched Archer, or the... Wait, wasn't that was called Enterprise, right? Gotcha. Yeah, because I am thinking of Archer, right? The Enterprise, Enterprise. Yeah, yeah, that was a really good one. I like that a lot. I, that was like a slow burn one. I don't think it got. I didn't watch it at the time. I watched it afterwards, and I'm really glad I watched it in period. Yeah, yeah, it was really solid. Okay, so yeah, so this, I think this is how, yeah, the later season, and just got me thinking about it. Um, yeah, I really, there wasn't... I watched, all, I think I watched all the Star Treks at the right time for me, like in my life or whatever. Like they fit really well with wherever I was at. Um, I think the only one that I've gone and re except Star except Deep Space Nine. Deep Space Nine just didn't do it for me. Like I would watch it a little bit, but not really. Oh, right on. Yeah, and it's but it, yeah, but it, it's just whenever you see them in life, because like I didn't see, I didn't see Enterprise when it was first out. I found it like later, later. Um, I think the only one I watched real time was, uh, well, I saw some episodes. No, those, those weren't episodes. They were being broadcast, um, but I saw some episodes on TV of the original uh, Star Trek, and then I watched New uh, Next Generation live and then deep space nine was on but I, I just wasn't my thing yeah oh yeah the little the, the really like woo crazy ones or whatever yeah those guys were fun i one of the episodes that i did like was they got and i think it was a tie-in with two different episodes but one there was like some weird wormhole thing that they're going back and forth in and they got trapped on the other side of it. And I still remember like seeing the expression on their face when it like closed up and they're just like zillions of miles away. But then like, I guess I watched more of them than I realized, but like seasons later or whatever, or maybe it was when Voyager hit it, they like, they landed on those fringe or something. I can't remember. Somehow they tied it back in and like ran into them or whatever. Okay, so I should set this. This is making a little more sense now. Yeah, okay, okay, this is making sense. Uh, one MP4. Two. Okay, this actually is making sense. Four MP4, and then we need. I'm just gonna do B and C, B and D, B MP4. 
D MP4. Everything should still pass. Here's where I don't know if there should be a test here, but... I don't think there should be. Okay, so VA dot... Clips to use. This is gonna be zero. One, two, three, four. Zero, one, two, and five. Everything's still passing, yeah. And so clip path file list. Yeah, Voyager was great. Right. I, yeah, you know, I never really noticed the language of it one way or the other that's interesting I hadn't thought about that huh never occurred to me um I I but the fact that I didn't notice it men means that it wasn't like grading on me right it was just there um but that can often mean really good uh also I wasn't as into language and eloquence then as I am now. Like, I really like a good turn of phrase. Oh, now they sound smart whatever what they say. Now that I'll give you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then, like, the confident, like, their delivery and their confidence and stuff, too, was also just, like, something to strive after. Um, I, yeah, I, I, part of me wants to go back and watch Voyager again, at least parts of, like, I, I should find, like, the, the beat episodes, like, the 20 episodes or the 15 episodes that kind of give you the the core of it um but like i've got so much other stuff to watch that i'm just not doing Yeah, no, Picard is like, I mean, he's the shit. No two ways about it. Um, like, everything about his presentation and stuff. Did you, have you watched the new Picard ones on Amazon? Like, I liked it. I didn't love it, but it was enjoy. Like, I'm glad they did it and I'm glad I saw it. Um, but yeah, it was fine. Yeah, I, I get the not much time thing. Um, that's been well, it's funny because, like, I've been less interested in watching stuff since I've started doing some of the streaming stuff too. It's like I want to keep doing stuff because I actually get to make stuff here, but. Also, I need to read more. <laughs> I just need to be rich and not have a job and just spend all time making stuff and reading stuff and watching stuff. I think that's that's my desire. Not really my goal. I guess it's my goal. Retirement, I guess, is what that would be at some point in se several years. Yeah, it's it's its own thing. The show's its own thing. Like it doesn't um I don't know if, actually I don't know either one of those. 
Free to choose sounds familiar. War against all Puerto Ricans does not sound familiar to me. Why do I feel like I know free to choose? No, oh, Milton Freeman. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I I have heard of this before then. I just I haven't seen it or heard it. I just the name was ringing a bell in there somewhere. There are a lot of links in here. The power of the market. The tyranny of control. Yeah, no shit. Hmm, interesting. Introduction by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Nice. George Schultz. Ronald Reagan. David Freeman. Steve Allen. I'll have to check that out. Huh, cool. Is there a wiki page on it? I like going to the wiki pages. There's not. Oh, we'll look at Amazon. Huh. Okay. These are things that I did not know. Holy shit. First time in history the US government bombed its own citizens. I was not aware of this. Whoa. They did not teach me this in history. Oh, I'm sure the comments on this book are lovely. Yeah, high ratings. When did it come out? Mm, doesn't have publication date. Easy to see. Oh, he's got yeah. I mean, what author doesn't have their agenda these days? But if they're if they're largely basing it in generally agreed upon facts, then like. You can split off some of the some of the other part, but yeah, if it's eighty nine percent accurate, then like that's pretty solid. Yeah, twenty fifteen. Okay, cool. Sweet, or not sweet, but like I've learned a new thing that we bombed our own citizens. Not what you would have thought. Yeah, 2015. I did not know anything about that. And I'm actually super surprised it didn't hit a wiki page. That yeah, hits the author. I guess maybe it's just be, if it was anywhere, it'd be under Puerto Rico. It's probably a long page.
Oops. Hmm, yeah. I know nothing. About the the first time I think I even heard the word was in West Side Sorry. I don't think I'd heard Puerto Rico before then. Which is not a good talk about the American education system. Yeah, yeah, I, so couldn't agree with that more. Like, I mean, and it's funny because I feel like, and I may be putting too much of, you know, we think about ourselves, we think about other people like we think about ourselves, but like the whole thing of like programming and failure, like you fail all the time. And like, that's okay. That's part of how you figure stuff out. But like, there's such a tendency in lots of other things to be like, oh, we can't fail. No, everything's great all the time. And like, what it's like, no, that's not how things are. Get into it. Like, fail it and figure it out how to make it better. Um, and try try not to fail, obviously, but don't don't effectively lie about it, right? Um. So yeah, I, I'm with you on that 100%. Totally. Anything caught on fire yet? You got me looking at Twitter over here on the side now too. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. So, yes, yeah, what's the what's the old thing? Step zero, identify the problem. And I don't think people... I, I wonder if programmers... So programmers are obviously more likely to do that in the programming world because that's the only way you can do your job. But I wonder if folks who do programming stuff adapt that mentality to the rest of their lives or to what degree they do. Um, and that's actually one of the, one of the reasons I, so like the whole, whole everybody should code thing was a weird thing from a few years back. Right. But like, I really think it would be neat to have everybody do the problem solving stuff of coding so that you can actually show like, Hey, Failure is just part of this, right? Um, and then we can talk about redesigning the whole education system, by the way. Uh, we can get uh, Professor Steve on here with us, and he will tell you <laughs> how we can actually do it. Um, it's kind of nuts. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so point out point out the problems. Yeah, I'm not I'm not knocking us. I'm trying to make us better, right, is the, is the mentality to take out of that. See if we can assemble this. So for clip to use and self clips to use. Print it, clip to use, whatever. Let's print it. So we see some numbers. There we go. Zero four five. Okay, so then we do this append Whoops. Ah I just broke everything. Self possible clip files clip to use. I think, oh, if this works, I think I will have figured out how to hook into this stuff. It didn't work because I broke something. List object is not callable. Don't you, isn't that how you append it? It wants this, that's what it wants. All right, so that compiles. Does it go green? 
No. Oh, because I'm not doing the directory with it. I gotcha. I can do that. I broke it. I broke it. I broke it bad. I made it explode. All right, so this would be... We just want to send that slash that with format. That slash that with format. That sounds that's my new wrap. And then where's our clip path? Clip root dirt. Let's see what that does. Any better? Nope. Where did we bust it? Uh, is there a white space thing going on here? Nope. Oh. Yeah, let's look. I didn't. Oh, I missed by one. I called the wrong number. Zero, one, two. Oh, that should be a two. Maybe. There we go. Yeah, okay, so what I can do... Yeah, this gives me some separation of concerns between... I can create this list programmatically, and I can create this list programmatically, both of which are effectively random as far as like testability is concerned. But by separating them out like that and then assembling them this way, I can actually get a testable set. That is a piece that I was missing. Still not totally in my head, but like, I need to make, so like what I need to do is come down with like, once I kind of get done with this, cut out that little bit and be like, okay, here's a way when you're working with this thing, do these three things instead and get the, the kind of assembly going. Um, that'll help me like dig it into my brain. But so now we can get rid of this. Ooh, I'm naming that the same thing, aren't I? I don't like that. Also, it feels like this should almost be an instant method, an instant uh, variable, but I'm not going to mess with that. Clip file list. Clip file path list. Uh, it's not yelling out too bad. Okay, that's fine. It's compiling. We're working on it. Okay, so that... Where's our list here? So that's all the parts. For the for the mpeg command. So now it would just be layering on the stuff that actually does the like pulls it down that does the split that does the counts. I guess I really should have done. No, that's fine. I like this without having stuff on it. So we can we can make another. Um, another run at it. Another example here that actually gives us a legitimate one. Yeah, because that's that's the functionality. So do we have, so clip root dir, JSON path, MP3 path. Load that from the file system. 
Make a call to generate those randomly, right, okay. Yeah, so this is more the tell don't show. So I don't, I'm not gonna worry, like I don't need to test this. Hmm, I'm just thinking names and naming. just for a little space. Um, okay, so now we can just start passing in the rest of the stuff to it. Um, yeah, because there's not really a test run for it, so. Assembler v3, import video assembler v3. So, what do we need to pass it? So we got test data v3, that's fine. Yeah, so we're not actually going to have, oh, we need to have the URLs. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We're just testing the video assembler stuff. Where am I going? Starting to get the tired is what's happening. So a symbol video, right? Doesn't have it, that's cool, we're gonna make it. Okay. So, Here's where things go sideways. So I need to get the dura I do need to get the duration of a song. So test state of E3, new directory, MP3, dir. Now let's move an MP3 file in there.
Crap, I should have actually had that target a specific file. Uh, oh well. Test data v3. Reader. Okay, what's that gonna break? No. Oh. What happened? Uh, yeah, leave that there. Now, why did that break? Oh, come on, don't be breaking. It's not cool. Crap, what'd I do? That shouldn't have broken. It's not passing any clips. Four clip and clips to use. Oh, was it not testing the full? I hate it when it does that. It didn't test the full file. Mm, okay, which one's breaking? First line contains four, extra element. Line 31. File clip path list. Oh, because it's not. duplicating though. But yeah, but this is kind of an integration test. I don't know. So again, I can make all this stuff go pretty easily, but like I feel like I need to split something right there just because it's got that duplication happening. Because I want to, I want to test that it's doing the right thing here with the assembly. Yeah, and this is basically an integration test. Because all this stuff is going to get populated automatically. I just have to have it populated in order to build the thing. Same up here. All right, let's do this again. Am I even testing that? Expected all that, got this. Okay. So it just wants that. Which makes sense. 
and this makes sense because we changed the name. Okay. Yeah, see, there's still this weird loop thing going on. But it's basically just... I guess I could just make one big chunk of procedural code. Cause that's all the that's all the stuff. Like that's the command to make. And like these are gonna be random. Alright, let me just work on this for a minute. I gotta go to bed soon. I do want to test getting the MP3 duration that we know we can split. Uh, test data, I'm in the wrong place. Get MP4, get MP3 duration. We're gonna cheat and just move this over. So we can just call it mp3 duration because there's really only the one. So that's going to fail because it doesn't exist. You see f g turn 106. Oops. That was not the right number. Uh, yeah, why isn't that the right number? because it's got to have we don't need to pass that mp3 though because we're just using an instance variable now we're passing Test again. I don't want to test. I want to be on the thing. Video assembler. There we go. Get duration. Oh, come here. Why did you go so far away? Ah, can't get to it. There it goes. Just gonna cheat and use all this. That didn't work. We need sub process. EXIF tool and then MP3 path. We need RE. Am I doing this? I'm doing this in the wrong file. What the hell am I doing? Where did. 
That's frustrating. Where'd my other file go? the process. I swear I was doing this on this file just a second ago. I don't know what happened. duration passed okay everything passing yes everything's passing so you can get rid of this all right no problem using all the code JSON path, which we're going to build, video file name, which really needs to be video file path. Do it for real. Test data v3 video output dir equals test v4, whatever. So this is all going to blow up. First thing is that. Let's just get back to green real quick. By real quick, I mean real quick. Video file name. Oh, we broke it somewhere else. Oh, it's gonna break everywhere. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this wrong. I don't want to get that far away from being green. That's still bad. There we go. Over there. Yeah, I don't want to be that many steps away from green. Um, you know what? I'm going to call it. I'm tired. Um, yeah, I'm going to bounce. This is good. Like, so I haven't actually, I could have had this thing done several times by now, but I like the exercise here trying to like get my head around it. Like I like this, doing this split of the abstracting away the randomness. Um, I like there's, and what it is is I'm starting, like I'm working to discover design patterns that people have already discovered tremendously. And there's books written about, um, which I just need to go read more. It's really what it amounts to. I need to do my chapter a day thing. 
Um, which maybe I'll do tomorrow if I don't have meetings in the morning like I think I do. All right. Cool. Um, all right. You all have a good one. See y'all. Happy election. Hopefully we'll see what happens. See ya.